In this video, we'll be using the HTML5 canvas and we'll be doing animation on the canvas using JavaScript. Now we have this canvas element set up in the body of our page already. and We've defined the width and height of that canvas to be 500 pixels. And you'll see here that we have this setup canvas function in our JavaScript. So in this function, we are getting the element by its ID, in this case, which is canvas. And we are getting the 2D context of this canvas. So we can use this then to control what we are displaying on the canvas. So let's jump into this and see how we can create a simple animation using JavaScript. So if you haven't seen the previous videos I released on the HTML5 canvas, you can check out those videos in the links in the description below. And they will cover all the basics of getting the canvas set up and how it works with drawing shapes and text. But in this video, we will be focusing on creating animation. So let's begin by creating some basic settings for our canvas. So in this case, we are creating an object and we'll pass in some values. So we've created a variable and attached it to the scope of the browser window. So I've got window.game and this is an object that stores settings that we will use to determine how the animation is operating in this demo. So we've got X speed and this is for the X axis. So I'm going to set this to a speed of 10. This will be 10 pixels. And we have a FPS, which is frames per second. And these will make more sense in a few minutes once we get to how we run that uh, loop. So we're creating a set interval, which will run multiple times over and over and over again. And it will run it every second. And then we divide that second by the frames per second. So in this case, we are running this script 30 times per second. So when you use the set interval command in JavaScript, it works with milliseconds. So in this case, 1000 milliseconds equals one second. So within this function, this uh, anonymous function that gets called over and over again, we're going to call two different functions within here. So we're gonna create these functions now in a moment. So the first one will be to get the positions of the shapes on the canvas. And then the second function will be updating the positions on the canvas, so drawing them on the canvas. So we're going to create two separate functions to handle this. So every time the script runs, we want to be moving the positions of the, the graphics on the canvas. So let's just tweak this a little bit to work with our window.game variable. So game.canvas equals document.get element by ID. So we're getting the canvas. And then in here we've got game.canvas.get context. Okay, so this looks all right. So then within the draw positions, we should be able to call layout.fill rectangle and we will create our first shape on the canvas. So we did forget to add one or two things here to the settings. Now we will probably continue to add more to the settings as we go throughout this video. But the one thing we want to track is the position that the shape is currently in. So in this case, we're creating a ball that bounces back and forward on the canvas. So we want to use the position that it is set to, and we want to use a Y position then also. So X position and Y position based on the X and Y axis. And then the width and height, the width and height of this rectangle will be 10 pixels. So let's go over to the browser now and see what this looks like. So we've got our rectangle at the top left corner of the screen and it is static right now. And that's what we want to change. You want to make this move back and forward across the screen. So let's see how we can do this now. So we'll move to our get positions function. Uh, in here we want to update the position on the X axis. So that's to make it move horizontally across the screen. So I'm gonna plus equal this. So this will take the current position and add the game.speed onto it. And you can see now that it moves right off the screen and it leaves this trail of black color behind it. So basically this is drawing the same shape over and over again. If we wanna change that, I wanna get rid of that long black line, we can create another rectangle that will act as a background in our canvas. So let's do that now. We'll create a big rectangle to cover the entire canvas. 
and we will set that to a color. So we can say layout dot fill style, and we will change the color for this. So fill style, we will set the color for our rectangle. So set the rectangle to white, and we'll make the background of the canvas black. And now that looks a little bit better. Now we'll see that it only runs once. So the, I have to reload the page every single time to get this to run again. And the object goes right off the canvas. You can see that going up to the right. But what we want to do is have it bounce back again. So let's see how we can make this bounce once it hits the end of the canvas. So we'll go back here to our get positions function again. Uh, this time we're going to have a conditional statement and we will say if the x position is more than or equal to the canvas width, then we want to decrement the value of the x coordinates, so the x position. So rather than plus equal to, we may be able to do minus equal to. But let's see how that works once we change it. So I'll add an else statement here just to make the plus equal to the default action. Okay, so let's have a look again and see what happens now. Now you'll see that it's stuck because the reason for that is that it deducts one value once it hits the end of the canvas and then it tries to add the value again. So it's constantly going back and forward. And we can confirm this now just having a quick look at the console log for this position. So let's reload the page. And here at the bottom, you will see that the values are constantly going up and down by five pixels on either side of the canvas width. So it goes from 495 up to 505 and back again. So constantly going back and forward. We can introduce a new variable here called direction. And this will solve this for us. So what we want to do is have a direction that is set. So by default, our direction will be moving to the right. And then once it hits the canvas edge, then we want to change the direction to go to the left. So once the direction is going left, we will be uh, deducting the, the X speed from that position every time. So the rectangle will constantly be moving left in that case. So let's add our conditional here just to see if the position of the rectangle is less than the starting position of the canvas, then we want to revert it and bring it back to the right again. So we'll be constantly changing the direction based on when it hits the edge of the canvas. And then I'm going to introduce a ternary statement here, just a quick way to break down whether we are passing the, the positive value or the negative value for the X speed. So our X speed is 10 pixels. That is the amount that we are moving our rectangle each time. And you can see that that works now based on the changes I've made. So we're constantly moving back and forward on the canvas. So it's very simple, but it's a nice little animation that we can complete rather easily. So let's look again at the value that we just added. So once we are adding a positive value, the the position will keep going to the right. And once we are adding a negative value, in this case, we're using minus game.speed, then it will have a negative result. So the X position will be reduced each time. We could actually rewrite this statement and say uh, game.xspeed times minus one. And that will have the exact same output. So having this is exactly the same, the result is the same. But just having the minus game.xspeed is like the shorthand way to write that. So hopefully you guys have found this video helpful. And if you have found this helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all in the next one.